Okay, now we're going to be finding quadratic equations. So up to now, we had the process of finding some aspects to find the complete graph. So we've learned how to sketch the graph for a given equation, haven't we? This time, we're going to actually do the opposite by finding the equation of the graph by looking at the graph. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm starting with question 27, find the equation of the parabola. So they already give you the graph, and by looking at this graph, I'm going to try to find the equation of it, okay? So all you need to know here is how it translates, okay? So you know what happens when we translate left or right, up or down, right? That's all you need to know. So in this graph, you know that it shifted to the right by one unit. So when we shift to the right, we subtract 1 to x, don't we? And you can also see that we have shifted up by 1. If it's shifted up by 1, we know that we add 1 to the whole equation. So our equation will look like this. So I subtract 1 to x because we shifted to the right, so it's going to be x minus 1 squared. And because we shifted up, we add 1 to the whole equation. And for those who are wondering why we have a here, it's because sometimes the coefficient will be different, okay? Sometimes we have a coefficient that's not 1. It could be negative, it could be positive, it could be 3, it could be 5, it could be something. We don't know. But there will always be a coefficient. Okay, Even if it's 1, it could be still a coefficient. So we have to find that coefficient and stick it back in. Okay. Now to find this, what I need, to, what I need is any point that lies on the line. Okay, if I have any point that lies on the line, I can just sub it in and the equation will still balance. And they actually give us a coordinate of the y-intercept, which is 2. Y-intercept is part of the graph, isn't it? So this coordinate here, which is um, 0, 2, we can try to sub it into this equation and we will be able to find a. So I'm going to substitute that point, 0, 2, into the equation. So I have y is 2, so 2 equals to a, and then x is 0, so 0 minus 1 squared plus 1. Okay? So this is all I need to see how the only pronumeral is a, so we can solve it pretty easily. So 2 equals to 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, positive 1 times a is just a, and then we're adding 1. So move 1 over to the other side, you should get a is just 1. So a is 1, the coefficient is 1. So just stick it back in, guys. So y would be 1 times x minus 1 squared plus 1. And it's a good idea to actually expand this out so it looks like a decent quadratic. So I'm just going to expand it out. So this is x, mi x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then you add the remaining constant, 1. And then just gather your like terms. So I'm just going to add the two constants together to make 2. So this one, x squared minus 2x plus 2 is the equation of this graph. Easy? That's pretty much it. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next few questions. So let's try. 28. Okay, so first identify how it translates and how it transforms. So this time it's shifted to the left by 2 units. So that's why it's negative 2 here. So we've shifted to the left and we've shifted it down by 1 unit. Okay, so hopefully most of you can identify how the graph will look like. So it's going to look like this. So again, we have our coefficient unknown, so we're going to find that coefficient soon. So leave it as just any pronumeral. I just left it as a. And then because it's shifted to the left by 2 units, remember when we shift to the left, we add 2. So I added 2 to x and then squared it. And because we've shifted down by 1 unit, I subtract 1 to the whole equation. Okay, simple, very familiar, isn't it? And now all we need to do is find A. So we're going to find a point that lies on the line so we can substitute it in. And it clearly gives us the y-intercept again, which is, again, is part of, the uh, part of the graph, sorry. So this coordinate is 0, 3, so we're going to substitute 0, 3. Okay, it doesn't matter what point, as long as it's on the line or on the graph, you can sub it in and the equation will balance. Okay, so even if they give you a random point, say this point here, if you have the coordinates of that, you can sub that in and you'll still get the same value for A, okay, as long as it lies, in, lies on the line. And this is the point they give us that lies on the line, so that's why we're subbing it in. 
Okay, so hope you're not confused with why we're summing in in that point. All right, so I'll substitute that point in. So y is going to be 3 and x is going to be 0. Okay, so 0 plus 2 squared is 2 squared, which is going to be 4. So I did a times 4. Okay, just simplify it as you go. So a is simply going to be 1. Okay, move your... If you want me to do a little bit more working, I'll do that for you. Negative 1, I'll move that over so it becomes 4. And then a times 4 is 4a. Okay, so a will just be 4 divided by 4, which is 1. That's how we get a. Very, very simple. Just a bit of algebra. So substitute a back into here. a is 1. So y will be 1 times x plus 2 squared minus 1. Okay, and then again, just expand it out so it looks like a decent quadratic. And that will be what you'd get. x squared plus 4x plus 4 and then subtract 1. So that's your final answer. Becomes 3 as the constant. Okay, so I apply the same way, same method as question 27. Alright, so that's question 28. 29. Find the equation of the parabola again. They give us the graph and identify how it shifts. So it shifted to the left by one unit and it shifted down by one unit as well. Okay, so the equation will be x plus 1 squared because when we shift to the left we add 1 and if it's shifted down 1 I just subtract 1 to the equation and then you know that the coefficient is again unknown so I leave it as a. Okay, so now we just need to find a and again they give us a point that lies on the line which is usually the y-intercept so again it's the y-intercept the coordinates of that is 0, 1, so we'll substitute 0, 1, okay? So y is 1, x is 0, just simplify it. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so this equation is just a times 1 minus 1, okay? And then move your negative 1 over here, so it's 1 plus 1, a is just 2, okay? So we found the coefficient of a is 2, sub that in. So y will be 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 1. And again, just expand it. So I have 2 times this part is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Expand it out with your 2. So 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus 1. And then just gather your like terms. Just gather your common uh, constant terms. 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's just your answer. Very simple. This is what is just algebra. Okay, so that was question 29. So it's very, very repetitive. And then 30. Okay, so again, determine how it translates. So it's gone three units to the left and it moved up two units up. Yeah, okay, so it shifted up two units. So our equation will be x plus 3 because we shifted to the uh, left by 3. So we add 3, square it and then we shifted it up by two units, so you add two. Okay, and again, just leave your coefficient as a. And what can you assume a will be? I don't know the exact number, but I definitely know that a will be negative because it's downward facing, so it's a concave down, it's a sad face parabola. Definitely make sure a is going to be negative. If you don't get A is negative, you probably did some wrong calculations. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Um, and again, they give you the coordinates of the y-intercept. So I'm going to make that our point that lies on the line. So I'm going to sub in 0, negative 7. Okay, so y is negative 7, x is 0, simplify it. 0 plus 3 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So just left that as 9. And then a will become negative 1. I'll just do a little bit more solving for you if you like. It's negative 7 equals to 9a plus 2. Move your 2 over, so negative 7 minus 2 becomes negative 9. And to get a, just go negative 9 divided by 9, which makes negative 1. And is it negative? Yes, it is. So we were right. Because it's concave down, a must be negative. So I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Set it back in. So a is negative 1, so it will be negative 1 times x plus 3 squared plus 2. Expand it out. x plus 3 squared is x squared plus 6x plus 9. Just some expansion. I'm not going to go through that in depth. 
and then I'm just going to expand out the negative, so negative x squared, negative positive 6x, negative 6x, and negative positive 9 is negative 9. And then of course plus 2. So negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. So that is your final answer. Just make sure you expand it out at the very end. Okay, so have a look at that. That's the equation for this graph. So see how easy that is? As long as you know how the graphs translate, this is all a piece of cake.